Alpine's Formula One era has begun, but there are some significant absentees with less than two months to go before 2021 preseason testing begins. A polite way to describe the beginning of Renault's rebranded works team would be unfinished or interim. Because Alpine F1 hasn't been unveiled in full, that comes next month with the official launch of the A521. But the rebrand has started. Alpine's work in progress F1 livery was revealed as part of a major Group Renault strategic presentation and its commitment to F1 was reiterated. This has been presented as a cornerstone of the Alpine strategy and the F1 team's official accounts have been renamed while the initial livery marks the first sign of Alpine's new identity. So we must consider F1's newest era underway, yet some major details are still missing. Alpine's F1 team has a Twitter handle and a new interim livery, but it appears to be without a leader two months before the start of the season. The man who was in charge, Cyril Abitable, has left Renault. This was announced in a corporate communication on January 11th, but has not been acknowledged by the F1 operation, and it was not addressed in Renault's corporate presentation either. In fact, nothing detailed about the F1 team was divulged in that presentation. All that was new is that the Alpine portion of Renault's presentation was led by new CEO Lauren Rossi. That means no confirmation of the expected appointment of Davide Brivio, who was widely believed to be Alpine's incoming, uh, CEO. His announcement, presumably in an F1-specific CEO role, was understood to be planned for shortly after his exit from the Suzuki MotoGP team was confirmed. But Alpine said nothing of Brivio then, and is saying nothing now. It's all a little bit messy, especially compared to the start of the Aston Martin era at the former Racing Point team, which has unveiled a new title sponsor, has complete continuity from last year, and started a swift rebranding exercise in the early days of January. At this stage, there are still more questions for Alpine than answers. Who's going to lead the team? Is Brivio joining after all? What impact has or will Abitable's departure have on the plan? And finally, why hasn't his exit even been acknowledged? It's hard to imagine this kind of silence and uncertainty if Toto Wolff departed Mercedes or Christian Horner left Red Bull. In fact, any team losing its team principal would at least be recognised. That just lends further weight to the feeling a curveball has been thrown within the organisation. Some kind of internal scramble would go some way to explaining why Alpine's supposedly very important F1 team was hardly front and centre as Renault presented the Renault Lucian, and why there were no F1 questions in the subsequent Q&A with analysts. But that might be a little bit of a stretch. There may be more coherency behind the scenes, and it would be alarming if there isn't. If Alpine was a brand new F1 team, then having uncertainties at the turn of the year would be less of a concern in some ways. But the fact this is a well-established organisation going through such peculiar motions risks repeating something of a classic Renault error. In recent years, the manufacturers spent time getting everything aligned, things progress quite nicely, and then something triggers a setback. Back in 2016, Frederick Vasseur lasted just one season at Renault because of the confusing and confrontational leadership structure. Vasseur was never replaced directly as racing director, as managing director Abitable absorbed the team principal role, which indicated the team and company knew the combination of those two positions wasn't exactly working. But when Marcin Budkowski arrived in early 2018 as executive director, a non-technical role with wider management responsibility, he joined what still seemed to be a bloated leadership structure. Abitable remained the overall man in charge, but Budkowski moved into a role ostensibly acting as a middleman between factory and trackside, perhaps akin to a sporting director, but that role had been held for a long time by Alan Permain. Then there were the technical chiefs, one for the engine, one for the chassis, and one overarching chief technical officer. That has been in the process of settling down for a while and things are becoming a bit more joined up. And for 2021, Abitable was expected to move into a role that focused on building Alpine's corporate structure rather than trying to wear two hats and harming the F1 team by accident. That seemed entirely sensible, giving him a devoted position while handing over the running of the F1 team to Budkowski on a day-to-day -day basis. There was therefore justified optimism that Alpine's era would hit the ground running, with the right people in the right positions and a streamlined structure in place. Presumably, Brivio would have fit in as a middleman of sorts between the F1 and road car side of the business, but exactly how that would shake out was never completely clear. But now the Renault to Alpine transition comes with a leadership reshuffle we know very little about. Abitable has left Renault entirely, Brivio was expected to join yet something's holding that up, and Bukowski's position is in an undetermined state as a result. All this might mean very little, 
Renault's company presentation has been in the diary for weeks and was not a self-imposed F1 team deadline. So maybe Alpine's having some fun or biding its time, withholding information about a leadership structure that's actually perfectly in place. However, the absence of an habitable acknowledgement by the F1 team, combined by the expectation he would remain involved in some capacity, suggests that news was a surprise. And it's entirely possible that Alpine is now attempting to piece together an alternative to the plan it was poised to put in place just a few days ago. With new F1 regulations just 12 months away, Alpine really can't afford to be spending any time now working out who's in charge and in charge of what. That would be repeating old Renault mistakes and shooting itself in the foot. Mercedes might not have Lewis Hamilton locked down on a new contract yet, but the people running the team and building the cars know what the structure is. The same goes for Red Bull and for Alpine's many midfield rivals. In this case, the absence of any news is news itself. Alpine hasn't addressed the departure of its team principal from the parent company, there's no official indication of his replacement, and a major new expected arrival is now shrouded in confusion. All this despite an important new strategy for Renault being revealed and Alpine's F1 team being presented as an important part of it. Much of what Renault communicated was in the vein of this is ready to be actioned, but Alpine's F1 team seems to have suffered something of a false start. And how it progresses from here will go a long way to defining the programme's success. Will it have the leadership structure Renault seemed to be working towards for a long time, or is the team just repeating the cycle of its potential being constrained by other factors? We've added those to the many questions we have for Alpine that need to be answered sooner rather than later. But what do you think about the early days of the Alpine era, and what's your view on the interim livery that's been revealed? Let us know in the comments below, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the race if you've not already done so to stay up to date with all Alpine developments and more from the world of F1 in the future.